several randomized trials evaluated whether giving intravenous thrombolysis in addition to thrombectomy uh, compared well to thrombectomy alone. And so the designs of the trial were to look at whether thrombectomy alone was not inferior to intravenous thrombolysis plus thrombectomy. And if you look at the strict margins of non-inferiority margins, around 5%, then overall the summation of these trials would suggest that thrombectomy alone was not non-inferior, meaning, if you had to translate it, that one should still give intravenous thrombolysis. And this is very important in primary stroke center patients because these trials do not apply to the primary stroke center patients where you should give intravenous thrombolysis because they're waiting for the transfer to the endovascular center, so they should have the intravenous thrombolytic. The majority of these trials were conducted in endovascular capable centers. So the patients were presenting to the mothership and then they were being evaluated. So yes, absolutely. If you present to the primary stroke center and you're eligible with a large vessel occlusion, you absolutely should get intravenous thrombolysis if you're eligible. Now, the question is, are there subgroups of patients in which one may think twice before they give the intravenous thrombolytic uh, prior to the thrombectomy? And my contention was I was arguing in favor of the tandem occlusion subset. And um, in these patients, sometimes they might need a carotid stent. There's a plaque that just ruptured and it caused an occlusion. And the mechanism for treating these patients might favor antiplatelet because there's some data looking at antiplatelet drugs, GP2B3 inhibitors, for example, to see if they might confer more benefit. And we, we are seeing some data emerge about that. Um, they haven't been compared to head to head with alteplase granted, but that, that uh, would be an interesting study. In speaking with my own uh, opponent, Professor Urs Fischer and his mentee, Dr. Johannes Kaismacher, they also felt that we haven't shown the superiority of bridging thrombolysis compared to thrombectomy alone, i.e. we don't know if we have any more benefit of giving alteplase or tenecteplase, if that's what your current situation is, in addition to thrombectomy. We just showed that it's not non-inferior, but if you're going to give this drug that's that potent, you know, do you, do you want to see a signal of superiority? All we have shown is it's not non-inferior. And so that's the, another very interesting question that, uh, that we think about these days, especially in the setting of tandem occlusion, when there might be more interesting medications that we could give that can help in the event you need a stent, because some of these patients, you just need to stent them because they occlude no matter what you do. Uh, balloon angioplasty, thrombectomy, they just shut down again. And so in these patients, you may not have a choice, but you want to give an antiplatelet agent, in which case, in the setting of a patient who just received alteplase, it's a bit harrowing because the guidelines say, well, you should not supposed to give anything for 24 hours. And what if you have a bleed? And, and some guidelines give some exceptions, but still it's harrowing because you're kind of going against the guidelines by giving more drug to keep a stent open. And the argument will be, well, by then the alteplase will be gone, but still, you know, you can't, you can't rely on that. And, and you need to know that, you know, you're doing everything you can to minimize bleeding risk because we've all had these, we've all had patients who've had symptomatic hemorrhages because we gave too much drug. And so, so we have to be very careful about which patients we give the drug to and in which subgroups, because some subgroups may benefit from different drugs rather than alteplase. One would ask, well, if and this is what, uh, this is an idea that was espoused by Dr. Kaismacher and Dr. Fisher is that, well, if thrombectomy came first, right. And then along, and then next came alteplase, would you design a trial for a non-inferiority or would you want to know that if you're going to add this drug, that it's superior? And so all the trials were designed as non-inferiority trials, which is fair. But if you're going to add a drug, especially in these certain subgroups where there's a certain element of risk of adding more drugs, then, then I would want a superiority trial or a head to head with another medicine, because I think we need to optimize the patency of these stents because one in five may occlude, which was found in a nice French study by Allard et al and stroke. And so um, we want to optimize and think about tailored regimens for each subgroup of patients.